Brixton, I've lived in Brixton for about four years, but South London all my life. Brixton is all right, it's different from where it used to be, you know, it's so different, like even the mark, just over there. It's, it's changed so much, the market, the village, everything, you know, it's up and coming. I say that. How do you feel about how it's changed over the uh, it's, got, it's better, in a, in a way it's better, but then in a way I used to like how it used to be, you know. I don't know, because nowadays there's just so many outsiders here. Yeah. Does that make any sense? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Brixton's looking like Camden now. A bit, it's, it's, it's kind of like there's loads of clubs, there's the old two, there's, you know, yeah. it's a nice little tourist attraction kind of thing, you know. Maybe it's losing some of the authenticity of the... Uh... Not really, but it's just gaining more different... It's not bad. Yeah. I like Brixton. Brixton cannot be changed. Brixton is always Brixton. I have many problems with the current situation of the UK, mainly Brexit and our leaving of the European Union, because I come from a family of Irish and Jewish immigrants. And kind of the stigma and xenophobia that's around at the moment, it's really upsetting to me because it's the stuff that my parents and my grandparents faced decades ago. And so and that then paired with the DUP and I'm non-binary and gay and with the DUP jeopardising my rights, it's really quite disgusting. In our parliament and in our social situation that we're in at the moment, I'd really like more youth representation and fairer representation of minorities, so people of colour, gay people, trans people, women, like everybody. Because we don't, we're represented by majority white men who are usually middle-aged or over. And it's something that's disgusted me ever since I was really, really young. And I want to fight to change it and I want people to realise that especially adults that they're they're destroying the country for us the generation coming up they're destroying the country that we're supposed to be bettering and just adding more and more work while stopping us from achieving a standard that we can get to in which we can change the country by making our making our degrees harder the GCSEs A levels university degrees it's all getting harder it's becoming more of a struggle for us and it's also deteriorating our mental health and then also not funding the mental health service, for example, CAMS, which is supposed to help us as youth, is really struggling at the moment and you're lucky to get half an hour every fortnight. So I would just like to say to everybody, where, no matter your age, background, just like buck up and do what's best for the future of the country, not what your bigoted ideas think. These days, um, I spend more time in Brixton because I'm not working anymore, I really had to retire. So basically, Brixton is the life uh, that I lead. So I work voluntarily in the library and in the parks and use both fully. So I'm very big on campaigning to ensure they are kept for the community. And Well, actually, there are a couple that are linked to Atlantic Road and Brixton Road particularly. Um, well, CLR James had his Race Today collective at the other end of Railton Road. Pearl was an artist who worked in Railton Road and showed at Brixton Art Gallery and Terry organised exhibitions there. They're, these are people that have died in the last few years, I mean CLR James a while ago. Um, other local heroes are Norma, who is what set us off on this trail. She volunteered a lot with her local communities and unfortunately died in 2015. So we wanted to make sure the younger people knew what they had also given to Brixton in the past. So the future will always have the element of people from travelling, moving through, as well as a more settled community. And they change over the years from Caribbean through to the refugee communities that have come and sought refuge in Brixton. I'm not sure if that will still be as an open place in the future and that's what I worry about. And what would you like to see happen? Mm, uh, that the locals are given more respect, I think. Because, for example, what happened with the shops under the arches, they were basically just kicked out because they raised the rent like massively. Did you know that the first Pride used to be in Brockwell Park? In the 90s, when it was, when it was like still legal and it was really political. You know, I'm, I'm, 
quite contented about life in many ways. I'm, I'm writing a book and I've got I've, I've got to the hundred thousand word mark this week, but I'm still. As I expressed to someone who I kind of half know on the tube last night, trying to, who was trying to express what a good idea Brexit is, it's insanity. This is suicide of the nation. Uh, anyone who believes this bullshit is, 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 they're not very intelligent. It's all okay. Everything's okay. Why go and commit suicide? It's absolute insanity. The people running the country, well, Boris Johnson and Gove should be in prison. They should be in the tower for treason and the, the vile Farage. All these people should be arrested and put on trial. And in time, I hope they will. Those are my thoughts. And it's all these people who live in the shires. It's these people who think, uh, Waterloo was our finest hour. Nelson was the greatest living English racist, slave master. Um, and we're going to return to that. We're not. This country, if we leave the EU, this country is going right down the pan, and it already is. But I hate that if a woman is just trying to be straightforward and direct about things, she's seen as aggressive. There's this massive double standard. And if someone as privileged as me feels that they are suffering from this, then it's really too much. I've just organised um, Unity First event at Pop Brixton, which is very successful. It was dealing, well, yeah, engaging with the local communities and parents and having an open debate about the gang crimes, grooming, um, knife crimes, Crimes, postcode wars. It's had a beautiful turnout, and people are really getting involved in it. I've got another job uh, event at Angel Town, and it's a job fair for 18 to 25. So that's going to be very interesting. Well. Yeah. Excellent. Anything else you'd like to say? Um, well, I think people just be positive, fight your struggles, and don't let your egos get in the way, and don't don't worry about what other people have, and try not to be competitive, and don't focus on other people and their material uh, gains and needs. Just focus on you and make yourself a better person. Yeah, I'm obviously slightly worried about Brixton, worried about how the libraries are being shut. Um, I'm a parent, you know, and the, all the community and the life of the community I've been living in for a long time actually, I've been living in, um, is being so slowly destroyed by gentrification, so that's a bit of a worry. I'm seeing some of my favourite characters in Brixton being pushed out, you know, everything what made this community so special is slowly. Yeah. The highlights um, is this multi uh, international community, which is a really lovely neighborhood to be in. And you know, um, all these beautiful restaurants and all this multicultural life is just so beautiful. And it's a real shame when the people who actually created that are actually not able to carry on living here. So, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I really, really, really love Brixton, you know. There's definitely a nice, strong sense of community. We're definitely arriving at a time where Brixton is really changing, where really are, I mean, we're at the moment, we're still trying to see what is happening, but also trying to learn more from the history of Brixton, how it was, the community and everything. So it's, I still feel there is a lot of things that I don't know about the place. Um, and yeah, I don't know if you want to. <laughs> I'm leaving tomorrow and I'm sad. I like, I like Brixton. <laughs>